What's up guys, I'm Ashley Jenkins and Microsoft has announced that their Xbox One console has sold more than 2 million units in the first 18 days following its November 22nd launch. They also share that so far gamers have unlocked a combined 39 million achievements and spent a combined 9,474 years playing the console. Microsoft's Yusuf Mehdi celebrates the announcement, saying, We are thrilled to see sales of Xbox One on a record-setting pace, with over 2 million Xbox One consoles in homes around the world. Sony announced on December 1st that PlayStation 4 had sold 2.1 million units following its November 15th North American launch and its November 29th European launch. Both consoles are currently sold out at most major retailers, and both Sony and Microsoft are manufacturing as many units as possible to try to meet the demand for Christmas. Microsoft has also made a new system update available for Xbox One, which improves smart glass connectivity, addresses issues some users have had when attempting to rejoin multiplayer games, fixes some inconsistent notifications, improves dashboard performance, updates the Wi-Fi drivers, and makes scalability improvements for updates to TV, system, and content. If you have low power mode enabled, and if you're able to turn your console on with your voice, you do, the update will have downloaded automatically while your console is powered down. You'll need to turn the console on manually, at which time the update will install and you're good to go. If you don't have low power mode turned on, you'll be prompted to download and install the system update when you log on from tomorrow. Sony has also released a new version 1.52 system update for PlayStation 4, which you'll be prompted to download when you next sign into PSN, and that improves system stability while using some features, but it won't change anything major. Microsoft is also coming under fire from UK gamers for raising the price on digital versions of their most popular Xbox One exclusives by £5, bringing them into parity with physical versions of the games. Titles affected so far are Dead Rising 3, Forza Motorsport 5, and Rise Son of Rome. Smaller exclusives like Crimson Dragon and Zoo Tycoon remain at £44.99, £5 under their general physical retail availability. Microsoft has confirmed the price adjustment but offered little in the way of explanation, saying digital content pricing is subject to change and we may occasionally offer various deals or promotions. Ultimately, pricing and promotions will vary by region. Next up, EA is under an investigation by law from Holzer, Holzer and Fistel as to whether they made false statements to investors about the game's status. They're looking into statements made by the video game publisher from July 24th to December 4th, which is when they announced they were halting work on further expansions until the bugs plaguing the game are fixed. That announcement caused a 7.3% dip in the company's stock price, and the law firm believes the loss of value may be a result of misleading updates around the game's development, sales and impact on overall revenue. The issues with the game continue to be so severe that Microsoft has been granting refunds to those who purchased a Battlefield Premium subscription, which would grant blanket access to all of the game's planned DLC, if it ever comes out. Those who get the refund also give up the subscription since it's essentially a digital return, though some gamers have reported support staff telling them they'll still keep it, so if you've gotten a refund, let us know whether you get to keep yours or not. Game updates for all platforms continue to roll out, with a recent PC update and another PS4 update today that aims to improve stability, fix audio dropouts, reduce chances of corrupted save files, and fix several known crashes. Rockstar has also released a game update, which brings the promised content creator tools to GTA Online. You can now create your own race and deathmatch jobs, test them against AI characters, and then release them via Social Club for others to play. The update also adjusts cash rewards for race, deathmatch, and parachute jobs to allow an increased payout for higher difficulty, improves team balancing, and fixes a ton of bugs and exploits, particularly around vehicles. Finally, Elder Scrolls Online, the upcoming MMO set in Tamriel, a world well known to players of previous Elder Scrolls games like Skyrim, has received a release date. The game will be available on Mac and PC on April 4th and will release sometime in June for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Game director Matt Fuhrer has explained the delayed console release, saying, Worldwide demand for The Elder Scrolls Online is extraordinarily high. This means we need to do a staggered rollout of the different versions of the game to spread out the initial service load and ensure an enjoyable, smooth gameplay experience. And that's the news today. Are you ready to jump back into GT Online now that you and your friends can create content to play? Or is it too little too late? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com for the newest episode of our gaming podcast, The Patch, to get our take on these announcements.